Amen. Lord, give me you. And that's what we want to be in us each and every day, to be in Christ. We are always asking the Lord to be in us, to take us through whatever difficulties that we may have. To our pastor, to the other ministers, the deacons, saints, and friends, I thank God for another preaching opportunity. Let us go into prayer. Blessings of God's spirit to fall fresh upon me as I bring forth your word. And as you bless this congregation, waiting for your word to be preached to them. Father, I thank you for my wife and daughters as they kept me in prayer. My other friends and family. Thank you, Father, for continuously directing and guiding me through the course of life. I ask that you continue to allow me to bring you word as you have imparted it to me. I ask these and all the blessings in no other name but your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. It is a, a pleasure to be, I would say standing, but sitting before you this day. It is another day that God has given us, allowing us to see this day. It's a blessing within itself to speak, to hear, to see, and to be able to smell. God has blessed us with all of these vital signs. The thing that I have for the day is why do I complain? Why do I complain? And I just want to lift up verse nine of James five, where it's not one against another. Brother, lest ye be condemned, behold, the judge standeth before the door. Now we heard the name of James mentioned before, but we really don't have a correlation. James is the brother of John. You remember John. John was beheaded by Herod. But I, I, I like the way that James comes forth with his message to the Jews and the Gentiles, but especially the Jews. James, his, his, his book uh, basically parallels that of what Paul has written. James doesn't hold any punches back because he said you have to be a person to let people know that you are a follower of Christ. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't say like we remember what Peter said when they asked him, said, are you one of those disciples? He said, no, I'm not one of those disciples. And then they asked him again. He said, I told you I'm not. And they asked him again, and then he cursed to prove that he was not a follower of Christ. James said that we should not be cursing because that is taking honor away from our Lord and Savior. But James was very bold when he spoke to the Jews. But they got tired of him talking about Christ. So what they did to James was they had him on top of a 
a tower and they threw him off of the tower. Such a fall, he should have died, but he wasn't. But they commenced to beating him and he was murdered. But he stood in the Gulf representing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Telling them that, telling all the Jews that no matter what you end up doing, no matter what you say, you have to serve the Lord. He said, if you are sick, then you need to go and see the elders. If you need something, you need to always be in prayer. You must bear your sufferings till the law comes. Because we are always going to be pinned with some trials and tribulations in our lives. Uh, there are some things which we don't want to face. But you no, know, you know, one of the things that I, I, I was thinking about and I said, you know, why do I complain? And I said, well, what do I not complain about? Well, I, I don't complain when the Lord bless me. I don't complain at all. But I complain, Lord, I pray for this job and, and I didn't get it. I pray for this increase in salary and I didn't get it. I, I, I pray for a certain man to, to be my husband and I didn't get him. I pray for a certain woman to be my wife and I didn't get it. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed Lord, where are you? Why do I complain? Is it because that I want to be in control of things? Is it because I want to make sure that somebody else is going to be accountable for something that's being done? Or do I complain because I can complain? I have the right to complain because I want to. Not that I just want to do stuff. I just want to point out for someone else to do the stuff. Why do I complain? But we must understand that we need to do things to reduce our complaining. Now, the Jews complain a great deal. They always had something bad to say. Why are you talking about Jesus Christ and he was crucified? And James pushed back. My Lord and Savior lives. And we have to constantly be in prayer in order to see him. The Jewish nation thought that it was an okay thing because, remember, they crucified him. And they did not want to believe that he rose again. And many of us today don't believe that he rose again. We think about everything that we possibly can to say, why should I serve the Lord? Well, number one, he woke you up this morning, started you on your way. Oh. Uh, it wasn't the alarm. No, it was not the alarm clock that woke you up. We have to make sure that we are coming into Christ. And coming to Christ means that we have to give up the things that we used to do. Now, you know, we said, well, you know, that I am going to be studying God's word. The more that you study God's word, the more you find yourself mimicking the things which Christ has done because you are increasing your faith and your belief in Christ. James is allowing us to understand today that we need to put away our complaints. We need to make sure that we don't have to have any grudges against anyone. You remember the Israelites. They complained to Moses, well, we don't have anything to eat. And Moses prayed and they got manna. All right, and after a while, they got tired of eating the manna. And they said, oh, you need something else with it. Wish I was back in Egypt. You know, we had all kinds of food. 
Moses prayed again. God gave them quail. Oh, boy, okay, now we got some quail and we got manna, and so now we can eat, and now I'm complaining about that. We complain about the food that's being prepared. We complain about what type of food it is. We complain about where it came from. Oh, we complain about the lights in the house. We complain about the heat in the house. Oh, we just had a discussion about that. Is it hot or is it cold? Or, or what is the temperature? We need to understand there are some individuals that don't have food. There are some individuals that don't even have a roof over their head. I, I don't know. I know we talk about the homeless that they're sleeping out there on the street. Now, I don't know if anybody knows what sleeping on the street is like. I didn't sleep on a hard pavement, but I slept on the grass in somebody else's country. That became a way of living. If there were no showers, thank God, because it was monsoon season and all year round that we had some rain, and I had a bar of soap I can rub on my clothes to remove some of the stench. But to live in that manner was a horrible thing. I just thank God for each day that he woke me up. Because we are always dealing with tragedies. We don't want to recognize it. People get hurt just driving a vehicle. We, we find ourselves wondering what's happening. I, I just happened to hear that there was a tragedy in a supermarket in Buffalo, New York. A tragedy. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's not a war. It's not a war that took place, but here are individuals going to a supermarket to buy some vittles and yet, they lost their life. We need to understand that there are some complaints that we consider to be legitimate. That the lynching bill that was passed, the voting rights, looking for women's rights. What about uh, just dealing with the respect of people? Our, our problem is all that are saying that we're in Christ is not. Because you are your brother's keeper. Because you have some good stuff over here, you're not willing to share with someone else to have it. You see, Paul was telling the Jews, look, you got all these riches. You got all this stuff, and you're not willing to give it to anybody at all. Not willing to help anyone. Well, we are in the same mindset today. We have all these riches, and we don't want to share with anyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, you know, the thing that we have to understand is if we are in Christ, we are willing to share. We are willing to give as God has blessed us. We are always going to be taught about the bearing the storms that come our way and to have the patience for the seasons that are coming. When we are looking for the kingdom, it is everlasting and happiness. Why do I complain? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, consider the fact that I can complain because I want to. Something that needs to be done, I can complain about it. I don't even have to say, honey. I can just say, when are you going to get this done? When are you going to get that done? But I'm not willing to help. I, you know, My hands are washed. I'm sitting on the side and seeing if it's going to get done. Or I'm going to be the one in charge of it. So uh, I'm complaining, you need to get this done. You need to get that done. But what happened to, honey, uh, is it possible to get this done because I'm unable to do it? What about that? 
Now, we're supposed to have Christ in us, so we need to show some love and respect. It's about love and respect. That's what Christ represents, love and respect. It's not that someone else can't do it. If you have a hard time doing something, then show the love and respect for it. A couple of weeks ago, we were out in the yard digging. My wife said, I'm, I'm trying to get this thing up. Uh, could you help me? I came over there and it was just a, a weed. So I grabbed and pulled it up. She said, oh. I said, yeah, you know, I just have a little more strength than you have. That's all, that's all that is all about. All you have to do is ask and it shall be given. We do not want to ask because it makes us feel we're not capable, capable of doing things. So James makes it plain to the Jews. That's the reason why they were upset. Now, you know they were upset with Paul when they stoned him. He got stoned a couple of times. But James, they got fed up with him. James was so bold, he would tell them that you are taken away and you are not given and you say that you love God. But you're not talking about Christ who came and took away your sins. But you are willing to complain about people not coming to the cathedral. But let's get things straight. You have to first honor Christ because Christ came to take away your sins. <clears throat> when you look at everything that's going on, God has put us in a situation where he said, hey, they're in sin. We have to have something to come. And, and James was pointing this out to the Jews, that God is preserving us because of his son, Jesus the Christ. Because now Jesus the Christ has taken away our sins. And we need to make sure we have faith in him. Because without the faith in Jesus the Christ, then we are still wrapped up in our sin because we don't recognize him. But when we recognize that Jesus the Christ has come and we surrender ourselves and Christ is our Lord and Savior, no matter what our hardships may be and our suffering, he will repay. So no matter what has been taken away from us, God is going to repay. You remember Job? Job lost everything. God said, just, just don't mess with his soul. Satan came and, and, and put all types of warps on him. But don't touch his soul. We need to be able to stand in the gulf just like Job, no matter what it is. James pointed out Job because he said, there is one that withstood the test and God replenished all that he had lost. We need to make sure that no matter what it is, if someone calls your name, that you are willing to stand and say, yes, you know, I'm, I'm a servant of the Lord. Yes, I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice for the Lord, even though they don't do it in this country. But there are other countries that if you recognize that you are a, a Christian, that you may be able to lose your life. And they had many years ago, I guess maybe 10 years ago, in China, if you recognize as a Christian that you were in jail or even tormented. But we have to understand that enemies are always around us. And we must suffer the circumstances, especially carefully, not to grieve or to groan against each other. And we find more Christians criticizing and putting down all other Christians. So they say they're Christians. But are we really in Christ? 
For when we are in Christ, we are our brother's keeper. We are willing to be in prayer for one another. We are willing in order to go an extra mile in order to help each other. We are not so quick to criticize, but willing to take responsibility to help. It, it doesn't matter. James wrote this epistle to let us know that individuals are claiming one thing and doing another. It is, is that pointing out some of us here today? Is that saying that, yeah, we're saying hallelujah this moment and then the rest of the week that we're cutting up and we're using profanity all the week long. <clears throat> it is not good to try to deal with having Christ in one hand and Satan in the other. And they call that straddling the fence. And we need to make sure that every man is accountable for whatever they do, be it the long term or short term. And we need to always be thankful for our Lord and our Savior. And we need to always be in prayer. As we continue to pray one for the other, uh, we know that God will come and administer one to the other. Uh, we have to always make sure that no matter what happens, uh, we are seeking eternity. And uh, seeking eternity allows us to understand that we must get right with God. Uh, this must be done today. Uh, for tomorrow is not promised unto us. Uh, we count this moment long and God who is our eternal duration, that you can count a thousand years, but unto him it is just a moment of time. And yet we must understand that even though it is a, a moment of time that we have the ancient prophets that let us know that God is willing in order to help us, if we are willing to surrender ourselves unto him and surrender unto our Lord and Savior allows us to have a happy life. You see, <clears throat> many think that our happy life is because we have a, a lot of money in the bank and, and, and we have a fine homes and a fine vehicles. But a happy moment is when you are endowed in Jesus Christ. For he gives us, he gives us our blessings. He gives us our hope. He gives us our joy. He allows us to understand that no matter what, even if we are dying, that God is still looking at us as we have passed on that the joy that he would have in us when he comes again. But we feel that we have to take the joy here on earth. So we need to make sure that our lives are responsible and living correctly while we're on this earth so that we are being preserved with confidence in God. Do we have confidence in God? Because we need confidence in God to make sure that we are going home with him. They said that he has many mansions. Do you have your name on a mansion because the life that you live? You have to live such a life in order to be right with God, not just for this moment, but for your life in order to be a witness. And we talking about being a witness for God it is just not here on Sunday, but it is each and every day. It is called 24-7. And when we are dealing with 24-7, that we are recognizing God, we are living as he is teaching us. We are taught through his word and his spirit. We are allowing him to direct us, to give us the grace that we need that we are appreciating all that God has done, not just this moment, but each and every day. We know that he has the power and the will to do any and everything if we only believe. James is saying, it's not your money, Jewish people. It's not your houses. It's not because you know 
the book of Torah, but because you don't have any faith in you, you don't know Christ, but you are spending time with the Mosaic law, but you don't have a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And we need to have, as James has pointed out to us, a relationship. And a relationship with our Lord and Savior is that you depend on him, that you rely on him, that you have all hopes on him. As Joe had suffered, Joe had trust. He had joy. He had hope in God that God will restore him. God will provide protection for him. We have to always understand that we always look to God for our tender mercies, for he is very pitiful for us. And it doesn't matter how much complaining that we do, that we must make sure that God strengthens us and teaches us <clears throat> so we reduce our complaints and spend time praising the Lord. We need to praise the Lord each and every day, reduce our complaints and turn them into praises. Thanking God for another day, thanking him for making a way. And even though that some things you pray for at this moment, it appeared that it didn't arrive, but it's just delayed. But thanking God, for all that he's done for you. God is the reason why we always continue to lean upon him. For we're not praying to Buddha or the Hindu or the Lama, but we're praying to our Lord and Savior. Why? Because he got up. He got up. We need to make sure that we're always listening to our Lord and our Savior. And that the sins of which he took away from us we do not try to hold on to them to bring them back. It should not be a struggle. It should be a peaceful walk. James is allowing us to know you got to be bold and stand before those that are trying to persecute you. No matter what they end up doing, you need to stand before them and let them know that God is the only way. He sent his son, Jesus, to Christ. And we need to make sure that we are wearing the cross in our hearts. That God has made it a point that it doesn't matter what we end up doing. The disciples have written many books. And yet are we reading these books to correct our lives in order to be drawn closer to Christ? Why? Do I complain? <clears throat> St. James says, above all things, swear not. How are they, their minds, this, that, listen to things that they end up doing? Common profanity. We need to honor God. We don't need to dishonor him. We need to make sure if we are in Christ that we are living the word as we talk about it. God is always present. And this has his sins of all that we have given unto him. He's taking them. He was sinless, but he came to remove the sin from us. And we should allow to understand that through the prices of temptations that God is always with us. And we need to make sure that no matter what we gain as he blesses us, that we treat it as a blessing and that we honor him with all due respect of things of which he's blessed us. Because sin is always around us. And we must understand that we need to stay prayerful at all times because God is always present and he's on our side. 
We must always make sure that we are going to lean upon the Lord. No matter what the occasion may be, we call ourselves Christians. Some say follower of Christ, but we must make sure that we must stop our complaining. Because God knows all and he hears all and he will do all the things for us that believe. No matter how hard the times are walking with the Lord, we need to pray to God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in spirit and watching, preserving and supplication of the saints. Jesus Christ will give you the strength through your difficult times. When Jesus walked on this earth, he healed the blind. He had given the lame the ability to walk. He raised the dead. He hung on the cross as the blood and the water come running down his side. He was placed in another man's tomb. And on the third day, he got up. And that's, that's the shout. Oh. That's the shout. That's the shout. He got up and he stood on the land and the sea. And he claimed all oh, power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. And we need to always make sure and we don't need to complain. We just need to believe in our Lord and our Savior. Because our Lord and our Savior had always made a way for us. God is always able and capable. We are always in his grace, in his blessing. Let us stop our complaints and give God our praises. Most holy and gracious Father, we thank you again for your word. Father, we ask that you continue to direct us, to give us the love that you have bestowed upon us. We ask these and all of the blessings and know in the name but your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.